Let's now talk about the Aegean Sea uh, and the people that are coming in during this time period. We're not going to look at mainland Greece. We'll, we'll save that for later uh, when we talk about Athens and Sparta, for example. So we're going to look at the Aegean Sea and the civilizations that are there. The Aegean Sea has a whole bunch of islands uh, that go all the way down to Crete. And the earliest inhabitants are going to appear in, on that island as early as 7000 BC. Uh, and early Bronze Age culture is going to flourish and grow on the island. And by 2200 BC, a very high civilization had already been developed. This is known as the Minoan civilization, and it's named after a, myth myth excuse me, a mythical king, Minos. Cities began to appear on Crete at around this time, and the largest and most important of the cities is Knossos. It's a large complex uh, and, and palace that was begun around 2000 BC. It's enormous that it appears to have housed, housed thousands of people. We don't know the relationship between these various cities on Crete. The absence of fortification suggests that all these cities were part of the same kingdom. There's considerable traffic between the cities, which supports this theory. Truth is, we would like to know a lot more about Min Min Minoan civilization, but we just can't read their writing. They have what's known as Linear A, and we have been unable to decipher what li Linear A uh, means. So, we have to rely mainly on archaeological evidence. And from that, we can tell that they are mostly farmers. Uh, their, their economy is agricultural. They raised figs, olives, grapes, beans, peas, and raised livestock. Some of these crops, particularly figs and legumes, uh, were specialty produce that were probably traded with other areas of the Mediterranean. Some others uh, were included jewelry made in the cities and pottery. It is probable that the great cities of Minoa and Crete owed their prosperity to the sea trade to, in, in their own produce and to everyone else's all over the eastern Mediterranean. Try and, now with, you know, from that we let's talk about religion. Trying to figure out what Manila religion was like from archaeological evidence is dangerous. We get clues from artifacts and, and some from later survivals which are incorporated into Greek legends and myths. The Minoans most likely worshipped a fertility god. We know that they, were, they worshipped this male god who was born and died annually. This cult may have been uh, imported from the Near East, where dying and rising of gods uh, is associated with agricultural fertility worship. Another cult that's de dedicated to, uh, animal is to animal fertility and is associated with small statues of, of a woman holding snakes and usually surrounded by small animals. And you can find these figures all over, the, the, over Crete. Between 1550 and 1450, however, the Minoans are going to fall in some hard times. There was enormous volcanic eruption on the island of Santorini, about 140 miles away, uh, around 1550. Uh, scholars believe it's one of the most cataclysmic eruptions in history. The volcanic explosion literally tears apart the island of Santorini, incidentally destroying a Bronze Age civilization there, and sent tsunamis all across the eastern, eastern Mediterranean. One scholar estimated that the, a wave that hit Crete was at anywhere between 400 and 600 feet high. Since most of the Crete, cities on Crete were coastal harbors, and since the island depended on seas trade for its prosperity, the tidal waves could have crippled the Minoan civilization. But we do know that by 1450, Crete may have been invaded and conquered by the Mycenaeans of, of, of the mainland. Linear A disappears from usage, and then we get Linear B, which we can actually read. 